Lost City. We have just finished our delicious breakfast at Coca-Cola Cafe and it only cost $12.15 for four coffees as well as my patacones and Nick's toast as well as his eggs and bacon. Absolutely amazing. We came here to find something affordable for breakfast but it turns out that this place behind us actually has a lot of history to it. So this place officially opened this door back in 1875 under the name where they equipped us because there were nine doors to get into the cafe in the first place. However, when Panama separated officially from Colombia at the beginning of the 1900s, a few years later, the Coca-Cola company swept in and built a factory here in Panama. That led to a lot of popularity for the world's favorite soft drink. And so as a result, this cafe brokered a deal with the Coca-Cola company to be able to change its name officially to Cafe Coca-Cola. All of this had come in before copyright law had officially been established, but it was all done in still something of a legal process. About 50 years later though, the Coca-Cola company decided to change its mind about the whole thing and tried to sue this cafe twice. However, both times it was completely unsuccessful. And so rather than trying to beat them, the Coca-Cola company decided to join them and they maintain links between them to this day with somebody from coca-cola company headquarters in atlanta visiting this cafe every year to maintain relations so not only is this cafe the oldest in the whole country of panama but it is the only one that maintains official brand naming rights for coca-cola in the entire world that's pretty cool but we want to learn even more history about Panama and Panama City specifically. So we are going to head over to the meeting point for a free walking tour. As a country, Panama is oriented in an east-west direction, connecting Costa Rica on the west with Colombia on the east. Formed by the collision and uprising of tectonic plates millions of years ago, Panama acts as a natural border between the Atlantic Ocean to the north and the Pacific Ocean to the south. Until Rodrigo de Bastidas became the first European to explore Panama in 1501, the country had been settled only by the indigenous population. After Vasco Núñez de Balboa demonstrated that Panama connected both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, the Spanish Empire realized its geographical value for trade, especially of gold and silver, and founded Panama City under Pedro Arias Davila in 1519. Jealous of the Spanish Empire's growing wealth, Captain Henry Morgan, yes, that Captain Morgan, backed by the English government, attacked Panama City in 1671 and re-established it two years later, eight kilometers from its original settlement. After over 300 years of Spanish rule, Panama gained independence for the first time in 1821 and chose to join the country of Gran Colombia, which also included Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela. Panama prospered economically during the California Gold Rush between 1849 and 1869 as a result of the increased traffic from people transiting from the east to west coast of the USA, and the two countries maintained strong links afterwards. In fact, it was with the USA's military support that Panama peacefully separated from Gran Colombia in 1903 and officially gained independence as an individual republic. A lot of Panama City's architecture is shaped by vast modern skyscrapers, a mark of its successful international trade, helped in no small part by the famous Panama Canal. However, Casco Antigo, aka the Old Quarter, which we toured today, draws a lot of its architecture from its colonial, pre-independent past. As a result, many of the buildings are influenced by Spain, but also France, who were one of the originators of the canal. A lot of this area was falling into disrepair until 1997, when UNESCO officially designated Casco Antigo as a World Heritage Site. Since then, it has continued to undergo restoration work to bring this beautiful part of the city back to its former glory. We've just finished our walking tour and our guide Giovanni was absolutely amazing. He went above and beyond. I don't know what the listed length of time this tour was supposed to be, but he spent almost four hours with us and it flew by. He gave us so much historical, economic, religious, cultural information. He answered all of our questions and he kept it interesting the whole time. It felt very personalized, like he would tease us and he wanted to get to know us. So 
just highly recommend coming and doing a free walking tour of Panama City or any city in general because you know how much we love our free walking tours if you've watched any of our other city videos. Absolutely. As complete first timers to Panama and people who really don't know a lot about it, this is the best possible introduction we could have hoped for. And Giovanni, as mentioned, is just such a wealth of knowledge. So if you can get yourself on this kind of tour, we are 100% recommend you do. Are you hungry? Famished. So let's go and sort that out, shall we? We just jumped into this local place to get an almuerzo. And for all of this food, for the pair of us, which includes rice, beans, plantains, protein, and like a little side salad as well, eight. 50 US. Amazing value. Such a huge quantity too. Absolutely. This is going to be extremely filling and we cannot wait. That food was absolutely divine. Once again, proving that the best way to enjoy local food is to eat locally. But it's now 3pm. we got some work to do. So we really haven't got much else planned by way of going out. So we feel like it's probably time to wrap the vlog up for today. So with that, we're going to see you in the morning. Good morning from Panama City. We decided to try this new place out for breakfast and that was a solid choice. You kind of have a buffet and you can pick what foods you want, whether it be an omelet, eggs, tortilla, sausage, patacones. They had so much variety to choose from and you pay per item. But as you could see, we got absolutely massive plates. We also got two black coffees and it cost us $8.90 for the whole thing. We now have two coffees to go and we are going to head to see the jewel in the crown which is the Panama Canal. Before we head into Miraflores Visitor Center, I just wanted to touch on why we ended up taking an Uber. It was only $4.25 and you can take a bus from the city here, but each person needs to purchase a $5 transportation card. So when you think about it, we would have had to spend $10 on transportation cards plus the actual fee for the bus when we could spend under $10 and just get an Uber here and an Uber back. Now, if we were going to take the bus more while we were here in Panama City, it might make sense to have done that, but because that's not the case, that's why we took an Uber. Now that we're here though, let's go check it out. The cost to get into the visitor center is 17 US dollars and 22 cents. Why the 22 cents? Who knows, but we paid it anyway. What this includes is not just an entry to the visitor center and the viewing platform for the canal, but also to the IMAX theater, where there is a 45 minute movie that you get to watch, which apparently is narrated by Morgan Freeman. So let's go check that out. Five hundred years ago, the Spanish Empire was seeking a fast and economical manner to maneuver gold and silver between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Later, during the mid-1800s, people from North America's east coast needed quick and safe passage to the west coast during the gold rush. Prior to the construction of the Panama Canal, two options were available. Sailing around the southern tip of South America was both hazardous and lengthy while transporting commercial goods over land via the narrow 80 km Panama Isthmus was slow. Under the supervision of Ferdinand de Lesseps, who had built the Suez Canal, the French attempted to construct a sea level canal but failed because workers were not equipped for the country's rainy season, raging currents of the Chagres River, dangerous fauna in the Panamanian rainforest, and tropical diseases like yellow fever and malaria. In exchange for supporting Panama's proclamation of independence from Gran Colombia in 1903, as well as a $10 million payment up front, and an annual rental payment of $250,000, 
the USA received the right to build and control the Panama Canal Zone under the High Bunau Valley Treaty. Construction began in 1904 with Chief Engineer John Frank Stevens' vision completed by 1914. The Panama Canal has three locks at either end created by damming the Chagres River which lift and or lower the ships to Gatun Lake, a man-made lake 26 meters above sea level. In 1977, the USA agreed to return control of the canal to Panama. The transition took over 20 years, with Panama assuming full control in 1999. A canal expansion project took place between 2007 and 2016. The 82-kilometer Panama Canal, which takes 8 to 10 hours for a vessel to transit through, can now accommodate ships that are 160 meters wide, 366 meters long, and 15 meters deep, carrying 13,000 truck-sized containers. While we did have to wait a bit for our first sighting of boats coming through the canal, we were then treated to seeing two, a small passenger ferry and a colossal vessel carrying 5,000 cars, which were brought into the lock together to maximize efficiency. Seeing everything we had been taught about in the IMAX movie at work was a fascinating experience and not one to be missed. Absolutely incredible to see. It was so yeah, impressive. Amazing. Just what a marvel of engineering. And to think that literally all, and I mean all of our consumer goods that we use on a daily basis probably come through here. The canal serves such an integral role 
in the world. It's truly amazing, not just to even think about as a concept, but to be able to see it in person and to be able to really appreciate the nuts and bolts that really go into making this what it is. It was a very special experience and definitely not one that we're going to forget in a hurry. And now it is time to go get some food because we are rather hungry. Party yet another delicious lunch for a ridiculous price of $5.25. We are now back to our hotel. And this sadly brings our time in Panama to a close. It has been a really, really good introduction to the country as a whole. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to go and explore more this time around, but definitely we do have plans to come back to Panama as we've heard that the wildlife rivals that of Costa Rica and the Galapagos, which absolutely loved. So the prospect of going and seeing even more of that is very exciting. The equally exciting thing is that we do have another country that we are going to be exploring and we are definitely going to be taking you along with us. So please do join us for that. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling. <laughs>